So, you're probably familiar with Venn diagrams and how to use them. Now, we're going to take a look at examples in which two or more consecutive events take place. And as beautiful as they are, Venn diagrams can't help you here. So, to find a solution, we are going to look to nature. That's right, tree diagrams. One of my students, Amatle, has come to me with a bit of a problem. Her soccer team has entered into a tournament. She's told me that they're going to play two games. And if they win both games, they win the tournament. Now, Amatle has observed a couple of her past games and she's discovered that they have a probability of winning a match of 55% and their chances of losing a match are 45%. So, Amatle has come to me with a question. How likely are they to win the tournament? Now, I've decided to use tree diagrams to solve this problem. Tree diagrams are used when two or more events take place, one after the other. They help us to visualize all of the possible outcomes and we can use them to calculate the probabilities of those outcomes. Let's take a look at an example of a tree diagram in a matless situation. We'll look at event one, which is match one. We draw the branches of our tree diagram and each branch represents a particular outcome, in our case, that is winning or losing. Now, I like to draw my probabilities at the end of my tree diagram. So, as you can see, the probability of winning a match is 55% and the probability of losing a match is 45%. In event two, we have four possible outcomes. So I'll draw my branches, which each represent a possible outcome, and I write my probabilities at the end of those branches. This is how you draw a tree diagram. But how do I use that to calculate the probabilities? Well, we're going to need to learn a couple of rules first. The first of which is that if you have multiple events taking place, you have to multiply along the branch to find the probability of those events taking place one after the other. That sounds a bit confusing, so I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. Amatle has asked us the probability of her winning a match one and then winning match two. How do we calculate this? Well, first we look at her tree diagram and we draw a line along those two outcomes and we multiply along that branch, which is 55% multiplied by 55% which gives us a probability of 30.25%. So Amatle has a 30.25% chance of completely winning the tournament. Let's take a look at another example. What are her chances of losing twice? Well, like we did before, we're going to take a look at the tree diagram. And we know that the probability of losing twice is losing event one and then losing event two, which is represented by that orange line on our diagram. We're going to multiply along that line and that gives us a probability of 20.25%. So she has a 20.25% chance of completely losing the tournament. Now that we've seen rule one, let's take a look at rule two. If there is more than one way of satisfying the conditions, you have to add the probabilities of each outcome. Let's say Amatle has asked us what her chances are of winning only one match. Well, like before, we'll take a look at our tree diagram, but it must be noted that there are multiple paths that fulfill the requirements of winning only one match. The first of which is winning the first match and losing the second match. That gives us a probability of 24.75%. The second pathway is that of losing the first match and then winning the second match, which gives us a probability of 24.75%. As I've stated before, we have to add those probabilities to get the actual probability of winning only once. So if we add those probabilities, we get an answer of 49.5%. Let's take a look at another example. What are Amatle's chances of winning at least once? Well, once again, we take a look at our tree diagram and we examine the paths that we can take that fulfill the same requirements. That is, the first path of winning the first match and then winning the second match. 
which gives us a probability of 30.25%. The second path of winning the first match and losing the second match, which gives us a probability of 24.75%. And the third path of losing the first match and then winning the second match, which gives us a probability of 24.75%. We add those probabilities and that gives us an answer of 79.75%. And that's her chance of winning at least once, which is pretty good odds, I'd have to say. Let's take a look at a new scenario. So, as you can see, I've got my friend Henny over here and a nice bag of mixed sweets. Some of these sweets are sweet and some of them are sour. Now, I happen to like sweet sweets and he happens to like sour sweets. So we're going to reach into the bag and remove the sweets and see if we like them or not. Go ahead. So he clearly didn't like that sweet and thus he placed it back into the bag. This is a scenario with replacement where if he were to reach back into the bag again, he'd notice that he has the same amount of sweets as before. Let's look at the scenario with a different sweet chosen. Okay, so he clearly liked that sweet. Now, if he were to reach into the bag a second time, he would notice that there are fewer sweets to choose from than they were before. This is an example of a scenario without replacement. Not now. So, the situation that you saw before is quite common. It's one in which you'll encounter two different types of scenarios. The first is one with replacement and the second is one without replacement. A scenario with replacement is one in which the probabilities of event B taking place are the same as those of event A, whereas a scenario with no replacement is one in which the probabilities of event B are different to those of event A. Let's take a look, shall we? Let's say you have a bag of eight mixed sweets. You have five sour sweets and three sweet ones. The probability of getting a sour sweet would be five out of eight. And the probability of taking out a sweet sweet would be three out of eight. So event one would look something like that. Now, in event two, the amount of sweets in the bag remains the same as those in event one. So our new tree diagram looks something like that. So if we were to try and calculate the probabilities with replacement, it would look something like this. The probability of getting a sour and a sour being 25 out of 64. The probability of getting a sour and a sweet being 15 out of 64. The probability of getting a sweet and then a sour being 15 out of 64 and the probability of getting a sweet and then a sweet being 9 out of 64. Let's take a look at the scenario without replacement. Without replacement, event 1 remains the same, but event 2 changes because we take into account the sweets removed. So, event 1 looks like that, but you'll notice a change in event 2. The denominator has changed from eight to seven, and this is because we now have seven sweets left in our bag. You'll notice that once you've taken out a sour sweet, the probability have, has decreased from five to four. And once you've taken out a sweet sweet, the probability has decreased from three to two. So, let's do a couple of calculations in this scenario without replacement. What are the chances of getting a sour sweet and a sour sweet. We'll take a look at our diagram and as we've done before, we'll multiply along the branch, which will give us an answer of 20 out of 56. Let's do another example. What are the chances of getting a sweet sweet and then a sweet sweet? Take a look at our diagram, multiply along the branch and we'll get an answer of six out of 56. Let's take a look at independent and dependent events. The probability of an independent event is not influenced by the occurrence of an event before it. The probability of a dependent event is influenced 
by the occurrence of a previous event. So, let's take a look at an example of a dependent event. This is the scenario of sweets without replacements. As you can see, the chances of taking a sour sweet out of the bag after you've removed a sour sweet have changed. This means that the probability of event B has been influenced by the occurrence of event A. In the same manner, the chances of removing a sweet sweet after you've already removed a sweet sweet have changed. Let's take a look at an independent event. This is our sweets example with replacement. So, as you can see, the chances of removing a sour sweet after you've already removed a sour sweet are exactly the same, which means that the probability of event B taking place has not been influenced by the occurrence of event A. In summary, tree diagrams are used when two or more consecutive events take place. The branches are the probable outcomes of those events. We can use tree diagrams to calculate the probabilities of those outcomes. To find the probability of the outcomes of consecutive events, you have to multiply along the branches. If there is more than one way to satisfy the conditions, add the probabilities of those outcomes. The probability of independent events are not influenced by a preceding event. For example, the sweets example with replacement. The probabilities of dependent events are influenced by the occurrence of a preceding event. For example, the sweet scenario without replacement. Well, there you have it. Money might not grow on trees, but what does are probabilities.